it's Roger Bisbee from Skill Builder here and in this video we're going to be looking at underfloor heating again. Now I know we've already looked at underfloor heating but there are so many different systems and ideas out there that we thought it was worth revisiting it. We get a lot of questions about it, a lot of people are confused, they don't know which kind of system is best for their house and there are new ideas coming onto the market all the time. The one we're going to be showing you today is in my mind unique and it has something to offer that the other systems don't have to offer. We're not doing an advert for it. All we're doing is showing you the system so that you can make up your mind whether it might be suitable for your project. Over the years, I've used quite a number of different underfloor heating systems and each one has its own benefits. I generally tend to stick to wet systems because the electric ones I regard as being expensive to run and only really suitable for tile warm up. If you've only got electricity, I suppose they're an option, but if you've got any other kind of heating and you can use a boiler and get warm water under floor heating, then I think that's by far the best. That's just my opinion. So within the warm water under floor heating systems, you've got piping screed systems, which are buried in the screed. And for this, I tend to use pump screeds rather than the trowel down screeds because you can make those thinner and they're stronger. And therefore the heating being slightly less deep in the screed is more responsive to temperature changes. One of the problems that you have with underfloor heating is that if it turns out to be a warm day, you're kind of committed. Your room is already warmed up and it takes a couple of days for the temperature in a room to adjust. So for those variations around the sort of spring and autumn, it can be a little bit unresponsive. So that's where the low build systems come in, the ones which are closer to the surface. You can get low build systems which sit on top of the existing floor and are just a very thin 10 millimeter pipe in a piece of polystyrene. And that means they sit very close to the floor surface. But here's another option, Timoleon. I came across Timoleon some years ago and I've used it on about four or five different major projects. In fact, one house I did, I took out all the ground floor heating system and ripped up all the floors and put down Timoleon. And the customer was absolutely delighted with it. We overlaid the whole thing with oak floors and I wish I'd taken some pictures of that because it looked good and it also provided exceptional heating. In fact, the customer said it was so good that they only needed to put it on for a couple of hours a day and the whole house was warm. Insulation is a key thing. The more insulation you can get underneath underfloor heating, the better off you're gonna be. Last thing you want is that heating escaping down through the screed. And that's why sometimes it's almost criminal when you see people putting these electric heating systems in on top of uninsulated concrete floors and they just tile over the top. That wastes a huge amount of money. In fact, a guy down the road from me had that system done ran it for one season, saw his electricity bill £1,500 for the winter and never switched it back on again. So, Timoleon. The Timoleon system uses chipboard which is CNC routed out. Now that pipe is an interference fit. Once it sits inside that groove, it's held captive because the groove is slightly undercut so it retains the pipe. If you routed out a piece of chipboard yourself and tried to achieve this, you wouldn't do it because the pipe would keep popping out. And once you've laid the pipe into those chipboard panels, you then stick a heat diffuser, silver foil tape over the top, and that spreads the heat out so you get more contact with the floor surface. I've used oak flooring on top of it. I've used tiles on top of it. I've even used Antico flooring on top of it and carpet on top of it. All of them work. I would say probably the best is a ceramic tile, but you've got to make sure that that floor is absolutely stable if you're going to start putting a ceramic tile over the top because any movement in that chipboard could crack the tile. If you use a flexible adhesive on the top, you're probably okay. So what we tend to do is put the pipe down, then put the heat diffuser, the silver foil down, and then follow up with six mil ply, which is screwed down onto the chipboard. You've got to be very careful here when you're screwing down that you don't hit the pipes. So mark out all the pipe positions very carefully on the chipboard before you proceed with screwing down the plywood. But fingers crossed, I've managed to do it without hitting any pipes so far. And I always keep the system under pressure test so that we know immediately if we've had any accidents and we know exactly where they are. But as I say, if you're careful about it, you shouldn't really have any problem. And the beauty of the Timoleon system is that it's got a very rapid heat up time from being completely off to putting that heat into the floor 
is as little as half an hour and because you haven't got that thermal mass you haven't got that screed it also cools down a lot faster than a piping screed system so it's got a lot going for it i know people are say oh you've got to rip up all your flooring and all kinds of other things and the other thing i would say is that you must make sure that those tongue and groove chipboards are actually meeting on a joist some builders i mean the guys that did one of these jobs didn't do that they oversailed the joist so they had boards meeting lengthways mid-span which is not a great idea. They got away with it because they had good Celotex underneath, which was well supported. They then put the floor down and then they had pretty thick engineered oak going over the top of it. So actually the weight was spread fairly evenly. But if you're doing something like tiles, don't whatever you do, join those boards between two joists. Make sure that the end of the board lands on a joist or you can put noggins in to help support the joist just in that position, which is another good option. So that's Timoleon, little company down in the West Country. I've dealt with them a few times. I find them very easy to deal with. They do a design for you, send you the drawings. If you're happy with them, then you just order the stuff and it all turns up the complete package, manifolds, pipe, controllers, all the things you need. And what's more, very good instructions to work by. So it couldn't be easier. 